Hey y'all. It's been a while. Um, I have been busy learning the last few months. I started doing uh, FBA, which is Fulfilled by Amazon. So if you don't know what that is and you're just here for like a thrift haul for Poshmark or eBay, Fulfilled by Amazon is where you buy stuff, you send it to Amazon warehouses, and then they hopefully sell it and ship it for you. Um, and they take a big cut, but it's awesome because you don't have to store stuff in your home. Um, so today I went to the bins to buy books to like fill out my next shipment and I <laughs> bought more than books. Um, I did buy 20 books. Not all of them are for FBA, but I did buy 20 and I think I already had like 30, 40, and then some other um, non-book items, more like retail arbitrage. Uh, so I'm gonna start with the stuff that's not the books, and then if you're interested in the books, you can either cut to the end or stick around and watch my crap being pulled out of bags. Um, I sell on eBay mostly, I would say, shifting more toward Amazon. I sell on Poshmark. A little bit I used to sell a lot more um, I sell on Mercari hardly at all and I have shuttered my Etsy shop for now um, Etsy just it's so many questions to list something on Etsy and I just get frustrated and stop and I I don't want to do it anymore um, so if you're interested in <laughs> listing my stuff on Etsy let me know uh, okay so oh <sighs> All right, um, quick synopsis of like the last three days. Um, I heard this woman on a podcast that I'd never listened to and probably will never listen to again because it was just, I don't care about it, but I randomly listened to it. Um, her name is Kate Northrup. She has this new book that just came out called Do Less, um, and it's basically like stop working yourself to the bone and just listen to your body sort of. That's a bad synopsis. Um, anyway, I heard her say something that like reminded me of something I read eight years ago, and I am not a reader. I wish I was. I was as a child and a young adult, but now I'm not. Um, I was like, ah, I have to find her book. I have to like, ah. Then I bought her book on um, digital, Amazon, whatever, and started reading it. Super obsessed. Um, commented on her Instagram and everything, like, super stalkery style. Then, like, a day and a half later, found out that she's going to be in Austin, Texas, where I live, this Sunday, so three days after I found the book. Um, and then, and then, today, when I went to the bins, the very first book I picked up is, it's not her book. Can you guess what it is? It's her mom's book. Crazy. Uh, so I honestly can't imagine <laughs> that I'm going to read this whole thing, but I am going to look through it. And, uh, and it was just like, you know, a sign. So anyway, check out that book. I'm totally going to do some videos on that book because I think it's super important. She has this stuff about like, we have, you know, rejected the nine to five system structure whatever and gone into business for ourselves and then basically like require of ourselves to adhere to that same schedule of nine to five or grind of nine to five maybe not those hours but that same like intensity and non-flexibility um and I as a person who am pretty addicted to hustling uh and also like <laughs> dealing with health issues and like mental health issues and you totally using like workaholism as a distraction and working through like stuff that my body is not prepared or it shouldn't be able to do, but it is because bodies are amazing. Uh, but treat your body kindly and rest. Oh, I also changed my watch to the moon because she talks a lot about um, listening to your body's rhythm, but also listening to, like, nature's rhythm. And, like, there are certain times of uh, each month and each, like, year where certain things are going to be, like, easier to do. You're going to be more productive. I'm going to stop. I'm sorry. Go get that book.
it's really good. Do less. <sighs> Alright, anyway, yay! Alright, so that's the one book I'm going to show you first. Uh, this is not to sell. Sorry about that noise. Uh, this is just a vintage Scrabble game for me and my kid. Yay! Um, I have not checked to see if it was complete, but it didn't look like grody or dirty in there at all. So, that's good. Um, I pick up fabric scraps a lot, like a lot, a lot, um, and then basically just collect them and hopefully one day I'll sell bundles of it, but this I think I'll probably give to my mom. It's a little cowboy flannel and another little cowboy flannel. Very adorable. Uh, these are some Nike sweatpants, dry fit sweatpants. They're in great shape. Uh, I don't sell a lot of Nike, but I like nice sweatpants. I'm sure those will at least pay for themselves. Um, uh, this is something that you might not want to pick up. Uh, my mom sells on Etsy like really well. She's amazing at it and I'm not. Um, but she does like bundles of paper ephemera like for scrapbookers or whatever and a lot of it's vintage so I texted her and I was like hey do you need um, vintage sewing patterns, and she didn't really because she has thousands, but they don't weigh very much, so she's like, sure. Uh, yeah, so I got a bunch of these. I'll probably pull out more of that. I'm sorry. They're kind of gross, but they're kind of cool, and honestly, like, this is a terrible example, but this is a better example. Um, if they're in, like, this condition or a little bit better condition, always look them up. Um, especially this one's cut, but if it's, it's called factory folded, if that hadn't been cut apart, um, and factory folded, sometimes they go for crazy money. I think my mom sold, like, one pattern for a hundred dollars before or something like that, and some 10, 20, 30, whatever. Uh, so check them out, scan them if you don't want to take all of them home, just, you know, do a quick Google. They're easy, they're numbered, uh, but sometimes, like, I don't ever think it's worth it to, like, go in and see if that's complete after somebody's cut it but some people do that and list it like it's been cut but it's complete <laughs> not me um I don't quite know what this was supposed to be it looks like some sort of like tech pouch um but it's a cute little Timberland bag if you haven't been here before I have an obsession with bags like it's bad bags um Again, I don't know how much that sells for, but it's the bins. Oh, I spent $45 total. It was actually like $44 something, and I rounded up for Goodwill. Um, and for something of that was the books. So I spent about $40 on everything else. Uh, this is a leather day timer. Another thing I'm obsessed with and have never used in my life for more than a day. Uh, but it's in really nice condition. It does need dusting. I don't think it's written in. Um, and I didn't check comps on that either, but it weighs less than a pound and I'm sure I'll get a dollar for it. I'm not sure. Pretty sure. Uh, I grabbed a bunch of these types of things. Um, uh, I didn't get all of them. They actually took the bin away from me while I was scrounging through it. But these, like, these are for closet doors, sliding ones, you know, little tracks for it. Um, there were a couple of things that I did scan and look up to see what they were selling for on eBay, and one of them was like $24, so I just didn't want to spend the time and scan everything, so I just grabbed a bunch of it, and if there's stuff that's basically worthless, I'll just put it in a bundle and be like, door things. <laughs> um... This is super cute. I only got a few clothing items, but this is a Torrid size 2, little sort of like army um, inspired, Boy Scout inspired. I, I used to have a lot of Boy Scout shirts. Um, Los Angeles peace sign and a, <laughs> nope. I love it. Anyway, thought that was super cute. I don't sell uh, very much Torrid because I 
honestly because my dress form is a size 4 and I was picking up plus size stuff because I'm like super into having all sizes in my closet but I just found like these all look stupid and I'm terrible at flat lays so I'm gonna try to get better at flat lays and keep listing stuff like skirts plus size skirts perfect flat lay um, but anything that like you want to see the shape of my dress form is stupid uh, this is another cute item. I did not look up the comps on this because I have a no leopard left behind policy. Uh, the brand is Bagot. I've never heard of it. Um, I also don't know what size it is. It's a one size fits all. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Uh, that's not true. Um, it is nylon and polyester. And it's machine washable, which I thought was awesome. It's really cute. It kind of has like a taffeta feel. I didn't even see like what the shape of it was, but I'm very into it. Uh, this cute little Texas Rangers tank top. It's in super cute or super good condition, and I thought it was really cute. And it's Fifth and Ocean, 2013. Looks new. Good job, whoever didn't wear that. Um, oh, <laughs> I liked this. This is the newest tags from Target. Uh, Zoe or Zoe and Liv is a Target brand, but I thought this was awesome. She believed she could, so she did. I believed I could FBA, so I did. It's going fine. Um, I think I'm gonna make some more F, or this is an, an FBA video. I think I'm going to start making FBA videos, um, so if you have questions about like being a super beginner fba or I am one. <laughs> uh, these are some swim trunks. The elastic, if it was ever there, is a little uh, pulled out, but it does have a drawstring, so that's cool. And they have little ponies all over them. I thought they were cute, and they are a size. Come on large. They look a little bigger than a large, but I'm not a man. Um, and they're in good shape. They definitely need a wash, but, no, oh, they need a wash and one of, I'll probably cut that off. Anyway, sorry I'm not telling you about comps on any of this stuff, because I just don't know. Um, this is from the container store. It is a little filer thing. Again, that might be something that I keep. I have all of my uh, thrifting and RA receipts in a Tupperware tub right now, and it's not going well. Um, so, this is a nice sturdy one that I won't hate. Uh, here is... Uh, oh, here's another thing. This is for a screen door. I don't think I checked comps on that one. It doesn't weigh anything. This is for my kid, I think. It's awesome. It's like a silicone rubbery sort of, it's not Lego branded, but I thought it was awesome. He's gonna love it. Uh, I always try to pick up anything Lego or Star Wars for him if it fits. If it doesn't fit, I sell it or don't pick it up. But. It's nice to bring home treats like that. I brought home one of those, like, um, has a roadway, you know, the plates. Those are expensive, too. The Lego plates are expensive. Oh, that's a book. Oh, that's not even from this haul. That was just in my car for my mom. Oh, so, in addition to, like, the sewing pattern type things, I grab, yeah, these are, like, some of the stuff that I got. This is not from this haul, but books that are like falling apart and are obviously like not sellable, but are sort of interesting maybe. Um, she'll let them fall apart completely and put pages in her packs. Um, but usually if I bring her something that's like in this shape, she won't tear it apart. Ooh, that one has a letter. And it is too. Miss Joy Del Richard. Should we open it? Mm, you're like a little Snoopy Snoop. Ooh. 
Oh, dear Joy Dell, this is from Monday, July 16th, 1956. Oh, I know you are having a wonderful time. I think this is a child. Oh, it is. It's from your pal. I don't know if that's going to show up. Your pal, Betty Ann. Anyway, sorry, that's adorable. And they were also going to see the man in the gray flannel suit with Gregory Peck. I just saw that. Jeffrey Jones and somebody else. Oh, God, this is the cutest letter. <laughs> I'll keep that. Uh, but, yeah. So, this book that is in good shape, my mom would be like, oh, I can't. Oh, my God, you guys. There's four-leaf clovers in here. That's awesome. Oh, they're probably going to disintegrate when I pick them up. Um, four-leaf clovers. I think that's a three-leaf. But these are, like, legit four. That's probably the first four-leaf clover I've ever found. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, nope, that's a 412. 412. Um, four-leaf clover as well. I love shit like that. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, look at the back of that. That is quite enough time on that little book. Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, stuff like that I buy for my mom, and she either um, saves them because they're too adorable or pulls them apart and puts them in her paper packs. I cannot spell my mom's Etsy shop, but you should totally check it out. It's Artvark, and there's extra somethings. I'll put a link to it. I'm sorry, Mom. <laughs> um... Okay, I think that's all that was in that bag. Yeah, that's all. Um, I maybe should not have picked this up, but it's so soft and it's in decent shape. That's just dusty. Um, in decent shape, except that it is missing the um, long shoulder strap and the handle strap Velcro or hook and loop if you're on eBay. Um, Velcro will come after you, y'all. Do not put Velcro in your eBay listing. Uh, this is messed up. But this is like a maybe vintage-y-ish Wilson's leather duffel. And I've already told you I'm obsessed with bags, so <laughs> surprise. I am normally... Sorry. I'm normally a huge shoe buyer at the bins. Um, they've kind of become my bread and butter, but this is, I believe, the only pair of shoes I bought today. And I'm honestly, I probably just was like, I need to buy some shoes. It's a pair of Cole Haan sort of loafers, as I say, men's nine. Uh, they're not in terrible shape. There is some wear to the heels. But, again, they'll pay for themselves, no problem, and there's probably some profit on there. I kind of always pick up Cole Haan unless it's trashed. It's probably a problem I have. Alright, let me pull this up. It's heavy. Okay. This is a cute little Band-Aid plastic tub. And I have some metal band-aid boxes that were my grandma's that she like put other things in. She put little white labels on them and was like, this is Kleenex actually. <laughs> uh, so I kind of love vintage-ish band-aid things. I don't know if I'll sell that or not. Here are some more of those door accessories, fittings. I don't know. Uh, I guess I got a lot more of those than I thought. These are adorable cards. My mom might get them. She might not. I don't know if they're all the same. They are not. Uh, oh, good lord. They're from the Holocaust Museum, which is not what I would have thought from that giraffe painting. But they all... They're all painted by 
one kid who was high or a young Simon Jeruchim. Simon Jeruchim. While hiding in France during the Holocaust. Anyway, they're beautiful. My mom might get them. And I might keep them forever. I should probably give them to my mom. Uh, oh, so this and something else that I pulled out earlier. Oh, sorry. Um, this. Stuff that's small like that, I'll look it up and see if anybody wants it by itself on e or if it's like selling for a good price on eBay you can see maybe that that's from 1973 and it's still wrapped up um but like vintage craft supplies vintage anything you know that should have already been used I'm kind of obsessed with picking up and if it's not valuable on its own I'll bundle it up sorry this is also right down by the microphone uh so yeah little ribbony things and those don't cost anything at the bins here is another one of those patterns. That's a cute, whatever it is. Is it a quilt? Uh, I don't know. Iron-on transfers. Oh, these were iron-on transfers. Neat. Well, I, don't, I still don't know anything about it. <laughs> I'm obsessed with these. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, I know the. I don't remember. It is the, well, this says pencil list, list finder. That's what they're called. Um, I have a black one of these that doesn't have anything inside, but this one is complete, even with like the time zones in there. Oh, and this is El Paso timers. Oh, El Paso time. It has some stuff. VIP hotline. <gasps> Y'all, if you need the VIP, well, I shouldn't do that, VIP hotline number for Austin Utilities, that's amazing. Um, but yeah, this has a pencil with it and everything, and some of these go pretty, you know, like, if you buy it at the bins, there's a lot of profit in it. I also just am obsessed with office supplies, and especially vintage office supplies, so that's a thing. I don't know. I think you can you can find those for like eight to twenty dollars or something like that. Uh, this again is for my mom. Uh, vintage graph paper, and it's nice because she can put a few sheets in everybody's for a while. She also sells uh, postage stamp packets, like bundles, bundles, hmm, sets. Sets of poster stamps, random, by color, for scrapbookers and journals and bullet journals. This is not an advertisement for my mom's Etsy, I swear. I'm sorry. Uh, these are more patterns. Let me see if there's like a good, oh, I keep hitting that. A good example of a factory fold. There's not really. Oh, wait. If this was, in, no. No. No, there's not. These are all used. Huh, that one's tied with fabric. That's adorable. Anyway, sorry. Thought I could show you something exciting, but I can't. More table pegs. I don't know what I was doing here. I got a wood Christmas card. I got a problem. Um, these, I saw this. It was Texas Monopoly. Um, I am not into trying to piece together board games that have been dumped out in the bins, but I thought those would be cute for paper packs, too. This is just shopping for mom day. Uh, <laughs> that might have been the expensive one, the patio door roller assembly. Possibly $25, I don't know. This is another one for my mom because the cover's falling off. But it's in Spanish. More patterns. I'm so sorry. This is so boring. Are any of these factory folded, you monsters? Mm -mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. <gasps> I think we might have a factory fold. 
Yes! This is a factory fold. So beautiful. I'm a freak. It's ridiculous. Anyway, there's your vintage pattern lesson for the year. Um, I got these SAT in a box cards. They are new, but the box is like obviously old-ish. Um, I picked up some the other day that was like, what is it? Essential SAT vocabulary words. And I bought them to send to Amazon because they were also like obviously new in the box, but used outside. <sighs> My kid, he's gonna just be done with fourth grade, was like into it. Which great, because he doesn't even like school that much. So I got these two, and we'll see if he likes those. He's smart, but he doesn't like school. <laughs> Cause it sucks. Uh, I got these for myself. Little colored zip ties. I guess they are for, yeah, these are meant for luggage. Uh, but I kind of always need zip ties. And it came with two nail clippers, which kind of freaks me out. Like, why? I get it. I know why. I get that. Uh, actually, this might have been the $24 one. The sliding door lock latch. Lock and pull. Anyway, I do not have boundaries or standards <laughs> when it comes to sourcing. Um, I'm kind of like... If I kind of like it, but I don't know anything about it, I might look it up. Sorry about the sunbeams, too. Um, and if I if it's just that cheap, I won't. Because it's honestly a better use of my time to go home and learn about it. And then maybe redonate it or put it in a lot of junk drawer, a lot, whatever. Um, I, I don't want to spend a bunch of time at the bins looking for stuff that weighs 5 ounces. Which is, I get it. Some people do. Also, like, if you do, that's great. I'm not a patient person. More patterns. I'm sorry. <laughs> I bought $40 worth of patterns. Um, patterns. Uh, more cards. More Monopoly cards. Casters. Kind of wish I needed those. I don't think I do. And this little rubber stamp, there was a whole bag of rubber stamps, but they were all kind of grungy, but I really liked the 100% club. <laughs> That's for me. Is there anything I'm selling in the, oh, the shoes, the bag, all these books, the planner, the other bag. This is all for my mom and myself. <laughs> uh, sorry. And then this, I'm totally going to sell. It's a vintage Land's End bag, super heavy canvas. It's got those like gardener pockets all around, which I think are super cool and it's super sturdy. And I love selling vintage Land's End and even more so L.L. Bean. It's my favorite. Um, I don't know, I'll probably put like 25 on this and see what happens. Unless I look up comps and they're 10 or 50 and then I'll go somewhere else. Um, alright. Is that all of it? <gasps> that's all of it. Okay, so that's all the... Oh, wait. These are not books. Last non-book item. There's, like, hardly any fashion. I'm so sorry. Nor... This is the first video you've ever watched normally. It's all clothes and shoes and bags. But not today. Um, these are those like foamy placemats. And I think that you can dry erase on them. I'm not sure. But it looks like that one is meant to dry erase. Uh, I don't know when these were made. I'm going to guess the early to mid 90s because they're not disintegrating and I thought they were super awesome I think I did actually look these up quickly and didn't see any but I love them I might put 
$20 in free shipping on this. Make it up. If nobody has it, make up your price. I always just like price it. I look up comps for sure, but I price it and then take offers because bin stuff, like you're gonna make a profit unless you're charging $1 per pound. Um, anyway. I just, I like the luxury of the bins and being able to, like, pass on the crazy good deals. And it makes me excited. I was super excited to find this, but not as excited as the next item. Uh, this is post-it picture paper. So you can print and stick. But... giant big pad they're called uh, I don't really feel like I've ever seen these it says they were 2013 and this is a not for sale sample I shouldn't keep these because I do not need a giant post-it note I have 60,000 small post-it notes that I could make one giant but we'll see I'll look it up if it's like people love them and they're $20 I'll sell it uh, watercolor paper. I just buy it because it's cheap at the bin. And one of my goals is to watercolor more often than once a year. Ta-da. Okay, so, uh, if you don't want to stick around or if I decide later that I'm not going to show the books that I bought because I don't want people to, like, search for them... I'm just going to tell you, oh, one more thing that's not really a book. I won't be selling this. Um, but they did, books are 5 for 99 cents at my place, and this counted as a book. It's like a huge coloring book, spiral bound. And I thought, I thought maybe my mom would like it, but now I'm not so sure. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. If anybody needs a wrinkly coloring book, let me know. I have one. Um, okay, so, if I don't show this, or if you're not interested, but you do want to know, like, what the heck are you doing with FBA, um, when I first started FBA, I had, like, a ton of new, but I listed them like new books, because they had been, like, branded by the store seller, but they were still, like, in the cases, they'd just been taken out to brand and put back, so that was my, like, entry into FBA, um, which is not sustainable because I am not going to stumble onto that probably ever again. So I'm going to start, oh, and then I did retail arbitrage and I do mostly, um, grocery stuff and like householdy type items. I'm trying to think of the other things. A little bit of like small electronic accessories, uh, but I feel like a lot of grocery and home. Why can't I think of what else I sell? I think that's it. Um, I mean, I'll sell anything, but that's my main categories. But when I was like, okay, these books are going to run out and books are like, honestly, the safest FBA thing to start with or even like continue with because... Uh, retail arbitrage, like, you're gonna want to sell groceries as new because that's the only option, but technically, it's not new because you didn't buy it from a distributor, you bought it from the, the grocery store or whatever. So, there's, like, a, this weird technicality of, like, Amazon doesn't know, but Amazon knows, they just don't want to know where you got it, um, which I had one box of a shipment so my shipment was like three boxes to three different warehouses I had one box that it got delivered like tracking delivered it's there and they lost it it's nowhere and I could have sent them all my receipts and said like hey, yeah reimburse me whatever tiny amount you're gonna reimburse me for but I honestly did not want them to know that like I got it at Marshall's or I got it at HEB whatever the case was so I wanted to diversify a little bit and get into the used books and like make it a steady thing. So I'm starting out with like, okay, these are my first like few hauls of used books. 
and I have really weird parameters because I came from doing mostly grocery stuff. Um, so I like don't look at the ranking as much as most people do. I do look at how many listings there are available through FBA and if the ranking is really bad but like maybe there's 10 people selling at FBM and the ranking's 4 million and the price is like okay if it costs me 20 cents I'm gonna go ahead and send it to FBA and see if I can get it sold and if not I'll pay them 30 cents eventually to destroy it sell it themselves um so yeah I have really weird parameters if this is the end of the video <laughs> I will do a whole nother video on like how I pick stuff and how I do whatever but um thank you for watching I'm gonna do the books now and I might cut some of them out if I'm the only one on the listing because I don't know I don't want you to know who I am uh, okay, so this book is not for FBA at all. It is for my kiddo. I did scan it because it was like excellent condition or like new if you will um, But there wasn't any profit in it and it does look like something that my kid would like so I got that uh, This one I think did have profit and is also in good condition and was a really low ranking, which low ranking is good, high ranking is bad. This one, I can't remember. Not a good profit, but I thought it was interesting. And to be honest, this sort of genre of books, I find sells pretty well. This is more of like a Dan Brown thing, I guess. But, anyways, <laughs> I'm trying to like say this how I would. I like to look at books that like aren't the popular books, but that like somebody who doesn't like to leave their house is looking for. Um, that's my strategy. I think this is for my mom. It's called Thunder Cake. Uh, this might be for my mom as well. I can't remember. I don't think it had a very good ranking. It's also just like a like a school Sunday school mass workbook but it is in English and Spanish which I thought was pretty cool this is for my mom I didn't even look it up uh, sheet music she really likes sheet music for her packets uh, this one was good it had a pretty low rank um, and like a decent profit again when it's 20 cents like I always try to leave a little bit of room for the price to tank, uh, generally generally like a decent amount of room, but with these books I'm just like let's try it because I am trying to figure it out and trying to figure out like my own system not somebody else's system because I don't really care for other people's systems, they stress me out. I don't know. Uh, I don't go, like, I pick up a bunch of books and then like scan them at the side right before I leave because I'm not going to stand at a bin and scan. Um, I don't like that. But things I don't grab, like mass market romance novels, even if they're hardback, like anything that's like, oh, I've heard of that book, probably I'm not going to get it. Things like, I don't know if that one was good, but stuff like self-help or something that looks like super niche. Um, like, I've never even heard of anybody that was into that. Those tend to sell way better than you would think. I don't know why. Uh, this is kind of just for me. I'm a freak. I don't know. Oh, relationship stuff, psychology stuff, things that, like, could be required reading for a class. That's my dog. Um, stuff like that I'm always going to grab and scan. And two more books. Um, this is not in great condition, and I think there were probably a bunch of listings, but there was a little bit of profit in it, and also I'm not leaving this book behind for 20 cents. I love stuff like this. Picture dictionaries are my favorite thing in the world. It's not true. They're not my favorite thing in the world. I'm exaggerating. 
Um, okay, and then this is a lesson for us all. I grabbed this because I like gold books. Uh, plain and simple, I like gold books. I might have sold one that I didn't want to sell. Oh well. Um, but I was like, oh, you know, it's a Bible. It's not going to be worth anything. It may not be, but there are two listings on Amazon. And I didn't, like, narrow down which edition I have. But both of them had, like, at least $35 profit, if not a lot more. So... I'm not saying look out for this book, but I am saying keep your eyes open for stuff that just like randomly catches your eye, maybe. Because sometimes it's the universe telling you that is a profit parcel. Anyway, that's it. That's all I got. That was my $45 worth of stuff. Um, I will try to figure out all my profits and like maybe do a little video or I don't know. We'll see. Thanks for watching. Mom, thank you. I love you. Uh, yeah, if you like it, subscribe. I'm going to start doing more FBA stuff. And sorry. I'm so glad this is done now. Bye.